Guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Monday, May 13th, 2024, and this morning, the New York Times and Siena College released their brand new sets of polls for this upcoming presidential election. They have polled key and crucial battleground states to understand where are swing state voters actually voting, who are they going to be supporting, who are they not supporting, and what issues matter to them the most. Now, the New York Times poll and the Siena College poll, they do one together. They have been quite accurate over the past couple of election cycles. They have an A-plus rating from 538 and are largely respected in the polling universe. With that being said, they pretty much reaffirm a lot of what we've been seeing in key and crucial battleground states when it comes down to opinion polling. President Trump leads in five key states as young and non-white voters express their discontent with President Biden, and we can see where it matters the most. Now, the question here comes in two different sets of questioning, one for regular voters, a registered voters, and one for likely voters. And you might find it interesting to see the difference in support depending on who you're asking. Registered voters are, of course, just voters that are out there that may not be the likeliest to vote, but are registered and can, should they get to the ballot box. And likely voters are voters who typically have voted in elections and are amongst the most likely demographic groups to end up turning out. And so what we come to understand here is that every election is a battle between whether or not registered voters are the true indicator or likely voters are the true indicator. In 2020, we found that it was very similar in terms of the actual results, but ultimately in some states, the registered voter group was actually more accurate than the likely voting group. But there isn't a genuinely clear consensus. And that's because these things change. They change based on the dynamics and the support that you're seeing for either candidate. But either way, no matter how you cut this poll, Donald Trump is ahead. But there is a bit of a silver lining here for Democrats, not to say that anything beyond a victory for the presidential would be substantive for the Democratic Party, but the numbers that they see in the same exact poll that shows them losing the presidential race also shows them potentially holding on to control of the United States Senate. It's a very interesting dynamic here where we have seen a lot of support for Democrats down ballot. The general consensus amongst the American public is that Democrats should be in power when it comes down to House and Senate elections, but not necessarily the presidential, and a lot of it has to do with what people are thinking about for both President Trump and President Biden. And so in these key states, we're going to be taking a look at an electoral map here as we fill in all of the states that currently have polls here. Uh, of course, we're just going to characterize the states that voted this, this way in 2016. I think it'd be an interesting way to just sort of look to see where Donald Trump has expanded support, lost support. Overall, very interesting way uh, of tackling an election like this one. But really, we're just characterizing the states that, you know, Trump won, Clinton won in 2016 because it's just fun to do. And, you know, generally speaking, this is going to be how the majority of these states are going to vote. Most of them aren't going to be switching allegiances the way that some did in 2020 or some might in 2024. And so filling out this map here, Donald Trump would get 307 electoral votes. Joe Biden would receive 231. And so it isn't too different from a lot of the predictions that we are seeing, especially based on what some of these polls are suggesting. But the margins at which Donald Trump has a lead in some of these states should be quite alarming for the Democratic Party. If we're to take a look at this from just the perspective of the registered voter column, the only state that Joe Biden leads in right now is the state of Wisconsin. And that lead there is roughly two percentage points. In every other state, Pennsylvania, Trump leads by three. In Arizona, Trump leads by seven. You start to see how this electoral map shapes up to be a very strong one for the former president, regardless of what the narrative might be on the Democratic side. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that, again, he has seen a decrease in support amongst young voters and non-white voters that is genuinely making an impact on this overall election. In the state of Georgia, Joe Biden is losing to Donald Trump by 10 points amongst registered voters. Amongst registered voters in Nevada, Joe Biden is losing to Donald Trump by 12 percentage points. Now, I want to take a moment to caution a lot of what we see on this map here, because I'm telling you this in full honesty. I don't believe a lot of the numbers that are being put out, but I do think they at least contribute to our overall political discussion. I think we do have problems when we see polls coming out of states like Nevada that show Donald Trump with a 12-point advantage, because that is just simply not how the state is going to go. That's comparable to states like Mississippi and Kansas and how rightward leaning they would be if this was the same election. The point is, Nevada is not nearly as conservative as Mississippi or Kansas, and it would be quite insanity to think that that is within the realm of possibility. Joe Biden certainly has lost support, but the extent at which he has lost support I don't trust a lot of this data. And I think I'm rightfully able to say that after the 2022 midterm elections that predicted all across the country a red wave that ended up being nothing more than a red puddle. And I think that is fundamentally a problem too. Because we look at the polls from 2020 with this lens of assuming that everything is going to be wrong again in favor of Donald Trump. 
that if Donald Trump was underestimated in Michigan by three points, if he's ahead by 10, he's actually ahead by 13. And that's just not the way that elections work. Obviously, polls have been wrong in the past. And in 2016 and 2020, in some instances, the majority of them, they were wrong and underestimated Donald Trump's support. But in other states, in off elections and in 2020, for instance, Nevada, which predicted a Donald Trump victory, which did not end up happening on Election Day, you do find that sometimes Democrats are underestimated. I think back at states like Pennsylvania in the Senate race, or Georgia in the Senate race, or Arizona in the Senate race, or Arizona in the governor's race, or, you know, Pennsylvania in the governor's race, Michigan, which was supposed to be Gretchen Whitmer's state by one point that she won by 11. A 10-point error in one of the most polled and important states for this country that you find a lot of investments, a lot of research in to have very accurate polling data, and yet the reality was that some of those pollsters were off by 15 points. I'm not saying that's going to be the reality of this election, but I want you to be a bit on edge when you see a number out there that says that Donald Trump leads in Nevada by 12 points. I'm covering it because I think it's necessary, and I do trust some of the data that they put out. At the end of the day, the New York Times has been a reputable polling firm. Siena College, they have a very strong track record. But we know this election is different because not everything is as consistent as it was in years past. And coming off of 2020 and 2022, it's sort of whiplash in the way that the polls were wrong. Wrong for Republicans in 2020, wrong for Democrats in 2022. 2024 will be a determining factor. Which side are they most wrong of? Because right now, it seems to suggest that it is equally true that Wisconsin, a state that Joe Biden won by 0.6% in 2020, is giving him a two-point advantage. But a state that Joe Biden won by 2.4%, he's down 12 points. States don't swing 14 percentage points in just one election, especially swing states that less than two years ago aligned exactly how they voted in the 2020 presidential election. Democrats won three out of the four House seats in Nevada. Democrats won the Senate election in Nevada. And I think we start to see that when you take a look at the Senate polling data that reveals a lot of the real interest of the voters in these states. And this isn't again to say or reject the fact that Joe Biden has lost support. It is more to say that these things cannot be equally true. There will be voters out there that will say relentlessly to pollsters who may even never be polled in the first place that voted uncommitted or for none of these candidates in states like Nevada that say, I'm not voting for Biden. But when they get to the ballot box, what we know in standard political history is that the base almost always comes home. And so when we take a look at these, this data point here, I would say it makes sense, the numbers in Wisconsin. It makes sense, the numbers in Pennsylvania. But when I extend beyond there, I genuinely don't know if I can back this up. When you look at the likely voter swing too, it also calls into question whether these polls are actually going to be super, super accurate. For instance, amongst the registered voter column, you can see here on the left, the likely voter column is on the right. A very notable change here comes from the state of Michigan, where Joe Biden goes from being down seven points, 49 to 42, to being up one point, 47 to 46. He goes down in Wisconsin, and practically every other state remains the same. But if we were to put it on the map here, Wisconsin goes 47 to 46 in favor of Donald Trump, moving away from the Joe Biden column. When you look at states like Arizona, 49 to 43 instead of six points, 50 to 41 in Georgia, so that's nine points, 47 to 46 to 47, so Trump losing to Biden in Michigan, Nevada, 51 to 38, so it actually expands to a 13-point advantage for Donald Trump. Again, a number I genuinely don't think is even feasible for a battleground state like that. And Pennsylvania has Trump ahead by three. And so the only thing that changes on this map here is the state of Michigan, which goes from Trump plus seven to Biden plus one. I'm sure you're wondering, how is that possible? And I don't have an answer for you. I think there certainly is a component of it that tells us that because young voters are not the likeliest group to vote, because non-white voters are not the likeliest group to vote, that the idea that you move it to a likely voter screen, which just so happens, and we know this based on voting trends, just so happens to self-select into a whiter group, a wealthier group, an older group, all demographic groups that historically have benefited the Republican Party more. But when you look at areas like the suburban regions of Detroit, or you look at Kalamazoo, or you look at different parts of the state of Michigan, all across practically, you find that Biden has made improvements significantly relative to Obama's performance in 2012, and Obama won the state by six. Even some improvements relative to 2008, when Obama won the state by 17 points. I think what we found here is very, very interesting numbers that, sure, amongst the likely voter screen, you do find that Trump and Biden do see some differences in the numbers, but not too much. 
And I'm not here to advocate for throwing the entire poll out, but I want us to use caution. If we were to take this poll, though, and we were at Biden HQ right now and Trump HQ right now, here's the analysis I would take from it. Things are looking good for Trump in the Sun Belt. States like Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, on lock, at least based on what the polls are suggesting. If you're working under the assumption, the same one from 2020, or at least in the aftermath of 2020, that the polls are underestimating Trump again in these states, these states become locked down. Georgia goes from Trump plus 9 to Trump plus 11. Arizona goes from Trump plus 7 to Trump plus 10. Nevada goes from Trump plus 13, actually, in a different direction, but still locked down, to Trump plus 10. That gives Donald Trump a sweeping victory across the Sunbelt region. If you're on the Biden HQ side and the Trump HQ side, you're wondering, where is it most likely that Biden still has a pathway? First of all, it doesn't seem feasible. When you're looking at states like Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada, Nevada was Biden plus 2.4, Arizona was Biden plus 0.3, Georgia was plus 0.2, all three of which voted for Biden in the last election. Wisconsin was Biden plus 0.6, Michigan was 2.8, Pennsylvania was 1.3. These states here should be equally as pro-Trump as swinging in the rightward direction, but they aren't. And that's a warning sign for Trump. Because here's where we are in terms of estimations. Here's where we are if we were to take the polling error in Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and swing it over left as it did in 2022. In fact, if we take a look at the swing in states like Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan from the 2022 midterm elections, the map starts to look like this. Michigan becomes likely blue. Pennsylvania becomes lean blue, and Wisconsin joins the lean blue characterization. But even with the shifts in states like Georgia, Georgia is still red. North Carolina, still red. Florida, still red. Texas, still red. Ohio, Iowa, Arizona, even Nevada, still red. And yet, Biden is at 269 electoral votes. Well, we all know the magic number is 270. Where might he get that? From Nebraska's 2nd Congressional District where he won by seven in 2020. Donald Trump saw a reduction in support relative to Mitt Romney in 2016. And the growing Omaha region is the exact reason why the Nebraska Republican legislature and the governor is actively considering changing their system in which individual congressional districts could vote for individual presidential candidates regardless of the rest of the state. And so Nebraska's second district is at a point where right now it could very well vote for Joe Biden is likely to vote for Joe Biden based on where it was. I mean, it's as Democrat as Minnesota was, as New Hampshire was, you know, as a lot of these states that are arguably more locked down for Democrats than they were in 2020. Existing data in that Nebraska second district suggests that Biden should, in fact, do better than he did in 2020. And so with that into account, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, if you were to take the polling errors from 2022, Biden still has a pathway. Which is why we still have all these conversations. Yes, Joe Biden can still win the presidential election, despite numbers out that show him losing in key and crucial battleground states like Georgia, like Arizona, like Nevada. Because at the end of the day, there is a pathway for President Biden that is so painstakingly obvious that people think about it when they think about the 2016 election as Hillary Clinton's pathway to victory. Because you can see it there so, so clearly that you don't need Nevada in that case. You don't need Michigan, you don't need Arizona. You don't need Georgia, you don't need North Carolina, you don't need Florida, you don't need a lot of the battleground states. You need the core three from the blue wall, states that President Biden already won in the last election. And what do these down ballot races tell us? That it is still very much feasible for Biden to win them. Pennsylvania has Bob Casey up by six. Wisconsin has Tammy Baldwin, the Democrat, up by nine. Democrats are leading in these states, and they're doing so very, very well winning against all odds, especially when, largely speaking, the presidential election determines down-ballot races. This time, it might be different. Joe Biden may only cross the finish line in Wisconsin because Tammy Baldwin is on the ballot. It could be the influence of Governor Josh Shapiro and Senator Bob Casey and John Fetterman that carries Biden over the finish line in Pennsylvania. It could be a combination of factors that show President Biden in a very strong position in these states, largely through an up-ballot effect where these down-ballot Democrats are driving out turnout for President Biden. And if these polls proved anything, it was that the numbers here may not make a lot of sense, but some of them absolutely do. And some of us can see that there is a pathway to victory. Some of these numbers reveal a very painstakingly obvious pathway to victory that might in fact be our electoral map this coming November. It would be a very fascinating, wild, and equally fitting conclusion 
to what has been a very interesting election season in the post or during Trump era. Donald Trump's involvement in the past three election cycles have proven to be such an interesting add-on, something that has certainly changed the way we look at politics, changed the way we look at campaigning, changed the way we have looked at both the Democratic and Republican parties and their election style. And this map here would in fact be one of the closest, if not the closest, presidential election would be the closest in modern political history. And it would be very interesting to see this play out. So we can look at these polls. We can keep tracking them between the time now and November 5th, 2024. It will be a fascinating election season. And I encourage you to keep your eyes out on these polls because they reveal sometimes interesting results and sometimes not, and sometimes question whether these polls are accurate or not. And so I would just encourage you to take a closer look Keep watching them. Keep watching these states as they change because we will be certainly covering that and talking about that in future videos. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2024 election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.